All right. Good evening, folks. I am calling to order the regular uh, bi-monthly meeting of the Marin Municipal Water District Board of Directors for September 19th. Uh, Terry, can we get a roll call? Yes. Good evening. <clears throat> Vice President Ranjeev Kush. Here. Director Larry Russell. Here. Director Matt Sampson. Here. Director Judd Smith. Here. And President Monty Schmidt. Here. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Do we have any public comments on the agenda? On, are, it's not on the agenda. There are none. <laughs> I'll get it one of these days. Later. Oh, You'll be I'm so sorry. impressed. Um, we have to vote on the agenda. Mr. Yeah, I know. I do okay. see a person, Mr. Clayton Smith, who does want to comment on the uh, agenda. So okay. I will unmute him. Go ahead, Mr. Cl Mr. Smith. No, I don't want to uh, comment on the agenda. Okay. I was all waiting right. so for the, the next, next item. item. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Just hold on, please. Okay. Sorry about that. I might have added to the confusion. Okay. Then can we get a vote on the agenda? Sure. <clears throat> Vice President Cush. Aye. Director Russell. Aye. Director Sampson. Aye. Director Smith. Aye. And President Schmidt. Aye. Now, do we have any public comments on items not on the agenda? Yes, there are two. We have Mr. Clayton Smith and Roger Roberts. Um. Go ahead, Mr. Smith. During your last meeting, one of your employees commenting on the recent staff turnovers made an interesting detailed assertion that appeared to come from some facts he had in evidence. He said there had been a 38% turnover with 20% having left for what he called greener pastures. This left 18% who either reached retirement, left the workforce, or changed professions. Assuming a natural attrition of 8% over this two-year period due to retirements, this leaves 10% unaccounted for. During 2021 and 2022, we were in the grips of the COVID hysteria. And I think all government agencies in Marin compelled their workers to take the experimental injections on offer from either Pfizer or Moderna. According to research done, looking at the toxicity of these so-called vaccines, there is ample reason to suspect that they are associated with the sudden sharp rise in death and disability that followed their rollout, particularly in physically active men. While listening to your employees' commentary, I was immediately reminded of this fact I wondered if over this period of time, when this excess turnover occurred, you also experienced a corresponding unusual increase in disability claims. Given the attempt to gin up another round of flu fears, and with them a campaign to uh, get as many people as possible to take the most recent iteration of these mRNA jabs, a look at this issue of potential injuries from the previous rollout would be in order. Also, given the bad reputation of these products, it stands to reason that compelling your workforce to take them not, might not be helpful in either maintaining their health or maintaining their retention. Given this, in the future, medical freedom of choice in this regard could become the defining feature as what is thought of as a greener pastures. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Roger Roberts, please. Good evening. Uh, this is actually uh, a statement that uh, Larry Minnick has uh, urged me to make on his behalf. He couldn't be here because he has an important Marine Conservation League board meeting tonight, and so he couldn't be here. He would like to suggest uh, that it's time that the MMWD update and reevaluate its mission, vision, and goals statement, in as much as it includes the objective of providing affordable water. This is misleading for the public and not an accurate statement of fact. In point of fact, it is the function of this board and the district's true mission is to provide water for its customers at a fair and equitable price 
it covers all of its actual operating and capital costs of providing that service. And so he urges that it's time to change your mission statement to reflect the actual state of affairs in this regard. Thank you very much. Thank you. There are no further speakers. Okay, thank you. Uh, directors and general managers announcements. We'll maybe start off to the left here. Larry, do you have any? I do. Yeah, please. Give me a second though, I have to get we, back to work. Should we come back to you? Yeah, sure. Okay. Thank you, President Schmidt. Um, it was interesting. I was gonna just mention one or two things, but driving in today, seeing all the smoke reminded us of, uh, we were right in the heart of wildfire season. We have from what we're standing six to eight weeks left. So um, I did want to say kudos for the folks that are doing the work on the watershed. I think we're starting to make some progress, but also very excited that we hired a new ranger and we're training that person as well as some new fire equipment moving forward. So it was good to see that um, and the work continues, but uh, I appreciate the progress so far. Um, the next piece was, uh, we'd love to get an update on how all the um, dirt removal from the um, tanks is going since we changed the route and see how that's the impacts are going and and just hear a general update on that i know it's only about a week and a half in maybe two weeks in but it would be good to hear the impact for the public on that um, and then lastly um just another plug for the tomales bay foundation their state of tomales bay is next friday the 29th and tickets are available on their website go ahead thank you Anji. thank you just um you know i know uh in our water supply roadmap, we're looking at uh, recycling or, you know, thinking to pick this up as we get a better understanding of how the state regulations are being updated for reuse. Um, but I just wanted to flag that the Bureau of Reclamation's Water Smart program has received an additional, additional $188 million to fund water recycling and reuse investments. The information is now on grants.gov. I'm sure Matt Sagas is on top of this one, but you know, just wanted to highlight it again as a potential opportunity that we uh, should be looking at. Um, and then, you know, Ben, I noted in your report that you you listed a couple of grants um, that are related to climate adaption and resilience. Um, one to, for one uh, state, and then one to NOAA. So maybe when you when you're giving your uh, comments, just a, a little, um, you know, a little bit of information on those two. Thank you. All right, Larry. Okay. I was doing something else, and I'll come back to what I was trying to do earlier. Okay. On Friday, the 15th, there was a district operations committee. Um, the district was awarded a grant for quagga and zebra muscle prevention. As I recall, it was like 186,000 or maybe it was 86,000, some number like that. That's what I was looking the number up. I couldn't find it. The uh, result of that action is that it's been referred to the board for decision tonight. Um, the committee received an update on the agreement with Team Logic IT. And the conclusion was that there was no need to continue that contract. The um, district then discussed the software maintenance reinstatement with SAP. There was a fee of about 150000 that is on tonight's agenda as well to be approved. There was an update on the water supply roadmap, and the gist of that is that um, Paul Sellier indicated that the work on the looking for the saline water in Petaluma indicated that there's not any saline water and there's not any water to be extracted from that location. So that's where we are on the potential for brackish water desal. And that was the end of that meeting. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Jed. Yeah, thanks, group. Um, I'm in Washington, D.C. right now on uh, marine water business. Uh, we had our first meeting this evening and over the next couple of days, as Ben announced, uh, I think a few weeks ago, um, we hope to be gaining access to the word of funding and the Army Corps of Engineers earmarked 
uh, $28 million for Marin Water to help build our resiliency in water storage and supply. And uh, I'm, I'm proud to be working side by side with Sean Horn and Paul Sellier in this. Um, and, and we hope that uh, our county and our customers will be um, heard and, and that we will be able to get these projects that have been approved in the roadmap the uh off the ground and uh and I look forward to reporting back in in a few weeks and and in the coming months about that progress um and and related um, per Ranjeev's comment uh we are also meeting not only with the Army Corps of Engineers and several senators offices and several congress folks offices but with NOAA uh, about um, some funding opportunities that we have that are critical, I believe, for um, for our watershed and for our uh, our land and our habitat and and our endangered species and our trails. So um, uh, th that's a separate set of funds that we have applied for grants for, and uh, and so trying to get um, get a. Washington, D.C. to work for us as much as we're working for everybody here in the county. Uh, I'd like to second uh, Larry Minicky's comment about looking at our mission statement. I think it's time to re, re look at that and review it. I think it needs to be updated as um, it has been many, many years. Uh, and, and, I, and I believe it's time. And, and thank you, uh, Matt, for bringing up the importance of our looking at fire risk mitigation. Uh, it, it has to be at the top of our list, and uh, and I still have yet to see a, a real detailed plan about how we will address it, and I'm, I'm sure it will be addressed, but sooner the better. Thank you. All right, fantastic, and thanks, Jed, for making the time to spend several days back there on behalf of Marin Water. Um, okay, with that, uh, General Manager. Good evening, board members. Uh couple brief items one just speaking to uh pine mountain tunnel i do think um uh the the project of moving the dirt w was brought up the uh we'll probably get out an email with more details but i would say just um as an indicator is going been going on for about a week and a half two weeks and i've heard little to nothing which is significant because if there were issues i'd hear it that's not enough and we'll put together a brief update on how it's going on the ground any issues how we're there we're resolving them and the like so we'll, that'll be forthcoming similar on the um, grants that were in my report these are right the one tam collective and then we have a piece of these broad grants i don't have um, sufficient details tonight but i think that we will um, put together some correspondence on those and explain those in a bit more detail um, i do have speaking of grants some good news that the district was awarded another california department of fish and wildlife grant in the amount of 4.6 million and this grant is actually being matched by 1.4 million we got from u.s bureau of reclamation for Lagunitas Creek. That grant was for site one, two, and three to help move that forward. Um, this grant means that all of our phase one sites, one, two, three, four, five, six, 12, and 13 are now fully funded with grant dollars. It's quite remarkable. Um, and the um, provides funding, not just for the work, but construction management services for support for that, for environmental compliance and implementing the design, you know, support during construction. So it's just not just for the hard construction and having funds in this way that we did in this grant allows us to move forward with these large efforts that would ordinarily kind of really um, dig into staff's time with our lean staffing. So with this grant, we're bringing on a limited term natural technician, natural technician um, to support um, the implementation and the monitoring and the like. So it's really quite a package. Um, I think when we did it, we were um, you know, there's always a balance of how high are you reaching, but we got, I think it's a fair read, kind of a disproportionate chair that for me 
really speak to the confidence of the state and the resource agencies with the work that's been done there with the staff we have. It's just really um, a good news story in my view. Wow, that's fantastic news. Ranji, if we can add anything? No, just uh, agreed, Monty. It's great news. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, Ben, you're correct in that that size of an award does speak to, I think, the recognition of the work of the district and the importance of of the fisheries resources that we are protecting um, and what they mean to not only to Marin, but obviously to the state. So, um, okay. No other announcements, then we'll move to the consent calendar. Can I get a motion to adopt the consent calendar? So moved. Second. Are there any comments on the consent calendar? There are none. Okay. Could we get a roll call vote, Terry? Yes. <clears throat> President Cush. Aye. Direct I'm sorry, Vice President Cush. Aye. And Director Russell. Aye. Director Sampson. Aye. Director Smith. Aye. And President Schmidt. Aye. Thank you. All right. With that, we're going to move to our regular calendar item. Um, first item up is our strategic plan development, vision, mission, and values. All right. Good evening, board members. Uh, Adrian Mertens, Communications and Public Affairs Manager, uh, joined tonight by Charles, uh, or with Charles Gardner from Catalyst Group. Uh, Charles was retained by the district uh, earlier this summer to assist uh, with the development of our new five-year strategic plan. And tonight's uh, only regular item uh, will be focused on strategic plan and specifically on the mission, vision, and values um, our mission, vision, and values statements, um, and which we really feel are foundational to development of that plan. Um, and so tonight is our first board meeting um, where we will be discussing the strategic plan development. Um, this will be for a five-year plan, um, but really there's been a lot of work that's gone into that over the past couple of months already and input gathering from district stakeholders. Um, the general manager and myself, uh, went out and met with all of our different departmental staff groups, um, 11 meetings in total, uh, hitting nearly all of our uh, district employees um, uh, to get their input kind of broadly on kind of issues and priorities that should be considered um, in development of our strategic plan moving forward. Um, we also, uh, our board members each met individually with Charles uh, to discuss discuss vision, mission, values, and goals of a strategic plan. Um, and then our SLT senior leadership team members also had in, uh, group meetings with our consultant to discuss vision, mission, values, and goals uh, for a strategic plan. And then finally, last week, we did a staff working group uh, where we had a nice uh, kind of cross section of employees from various departments um, all come together and really have a focused working uh, group meeting um, centered around vision, mission, and values as well to get their input. And so Charles is going to go into that in much greater detail um, and lead tonight's discussion with the board. We are hoping to start moving towards consensus around vision, mission, and values. Um, so again, we can kind of set this foundation for where the plan will go. So I'll turn it over to Charles. Thanks, Adrian. Um, good evening, directors. Um, glad to see you in person. Uh, appreciate it. Um, so as Adrian said, I want to walk through um, uh, a little bit of, of where we're starting with the strategic plan um, and uh, particularly to get your input on these foundational pieces of mission, vision, and values. Um, so let me walk through uh, first um, what we're trying to do um, with the uh, mission, vision, values is update them to represent the organization accurately and so that they resonate with um, staff, leadership, customers, and the community. Um, I'm gonna uh, review uh, what we've heard from the directors, what we've heard from staff, 
uh, on uh, mission, vision, and values. Uh, and then I've got you know, some draft language to discuss with you, interested in your input and reaction to that. I'm hopeful tonight that we do not wordsmith them, um, but uh, really interested in uh, what you think works, um, what you think needs improvement. Um, so this is really a first draft um, to present to you, uh, and we'll continue to refine this uh, as we develop the rest of the strategic plan. Um, and then I'll touch on the organizational values as well. We got input on that um, and some suggestions uh, there as well. Um, first, let me start with just some framing of strategic planning and the language that we use around strategic planning, um, vision, mission, uh, goals and objectives and values. Uh, vision is really um, where are we trying to go um, uh, or look to the future? What do we aspire to, to be? Uh, mission is, is how we get there, what we do on a day-to-day basis uh, to achieve our vision. Um, goals and objectives are um, taking the mission and operationalizing it within the organization. So setting specific goals and objectives that can be uh, measured and achieved over time. And then the values really are the foundation of the organization. It's what, uh, what describes the character of the organization. Uh, and ideally it reflects the people uh, and ha how you all want to work uh, uh, among yourselves, but also with others. So tonight I'm gonna to talk about vision, mission and values. Uh, we have heard input on goals and objectives, but that's not the topic that's going to come. Um, but we're just starting with mi uh, vision, mission, and values. Um, so uh, this is the uh, existing uh, mission, vision, values um, that were developed, I think, about five years ago. Um, uh, I know I won't read them because I'm sure you've all got them embedded deeply in your minds. Uh, and operate from them every day, but I will touch on them as we go through and see uh, uh, where we can make some improvements. Um, uh, Adrian talked about our planning process to date, but again, uh, uh, individual interviews with each of you as directors, um, getting your input and thoughts about the um, current mission, vision, values, and goals, and uh, what could be improved about them. Um, team interviews with the senior leadership, Again, focused on mission, vision, values, and goals. Um, group discussions uh, across the organization um, by Ben and Adrian. And on the right-hand side, you'll see the different groups that uh, they sat down with uh, and getting it, uh, input on the strategic issues and priorities. Uh, I would say a lot of that input, we've, we've read it all, we've um, uh, looked through it all. A lot of that is very focused on uh, objectives, tactics, um, goals, uh, the more practical um, uh, aspects that we'll get to in the future. But we did try to extract from it uh, things that would be related to mission, vision, mission, vision, and values. Uh, and then last week, we had a staff workshop uh, specifically to talk about mission, vision, and values. I would say it was incredibly valuable um, because our goal is to write something that resonates with people. And I think we really got some good discussion and uh, some really good thoughts about um, how the organ what the organization values now and how they see their current mission. Uh, and that really helped us um, shape some language. So uh, let me uh, start with uh, mission and vision. I'm um, gonna go through a few, a few slides here on what we heard. Um, it looks a little wordy, but I think I'll, I'll try to highlight um, uh, some of the key things here. Um, so again, on the mission, um, that water service is part of what the district does, but it also handles land and habitat management, uh, operations, resources, and risks. Um, the, uh, the mission statement is backwards, that water supply needs to be first, and then sustainability and natural resources. We are not managing all the natural resources for Marin County. Um, the mission is customer-focused only. It also needs to be internally facing to the organization. Uh, infrastructure is part of the mission and it's not currently uh, listed there explicitly. Uh, incorporate water quality and carbon neutrality in the goals. This was a comment about goals, but it seemed important also uh, for the broader mission and vision. Um, reasonable price is not the correct framing. It's difficult to define and apply. Um, so uh, there were a lot of comments about cost effectiveness and how we could consider that effectively. 
Um, partnerships, relationships, innovation, and resilience are important elements of the mission. So those suggestions came from a variety of different people, um, different uh, aspects or uh, important elements of the of the mission that ought to be uh, in the language. Um, comments about the vision. Uh, the vision and mission statements need to be more inspirational. Uh, the vision statement is missing the idea of forward or forward thinking, forward moving. Um, the organization should be vision led, that the, the vision is important for defining where the organization is going and it should be uh, prominent in how the organization is, um, uh, is led. Uh, the vision statement needs to create unity among the represented union employees, the unrepresented managers, and the senior leadership on the board. And I would say uh, across all of the input, we heard this uh, I, a concept of alignment, unity, cohesion as a really uh, uh, important uh, uh, principle as we think about the strategic plan. So I think you'll see language in, in all of what we develop that, that hopefully resonates with that concept. Uh, incorporate the management of the natural lands in the vision statement. Um, so not not quite seeing that that uh, function of the organization and the vision. Uh, the vision statement should capture the spirit of what Marin Water is, an agency managing land and water resources in one of the most beautiful areas of California. Uh, industry leadership should be part of the vision. Um, uh, so, uh, 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 yeah, uh, positioning the organization as an industry leader. Uh, integrate language around sustainability and the impact of climate change to address our waterways, water resiliency, community safety, habitat, and wildfire risk. And I would say this, again, was a common theme of, of updating the language to capture um, the, the strong awareness that our climate is changing, uh, that we need to think about sustainability in new ways, um, managing the risks that we face, whether it's wildfire or drought. Um, so there, was a, there were a lot of comments about that need to sort of update and capture that um, that uh, more current thinking about uh, what does it mean to to manage water in this area uh, today. Um, let me let me pause there and just see if there are any questions or observations just about what we heard. Any any thoughts or clarifications or okay. All made sense. Okay, great. So it's a lot of stuff, Charles. I'm really curious to see how you're going to synthesize this. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, I can tell that you listened. So I, that, that's. I think this is. I'm super supportive of the process so far. I'd, I'd add the idea of listening, building a listening culture. I think is a key to leadership and a key to success and relating to your staff and to your customers. And um, so I think that's that isn't in here. I don't. I didn't quite see it. Um, uh, but, um, well, you're thinking ahead, uh, yeah, uh, director Smith, you're thinking ahead. It does show up in the values that, uh, Got it. so uh, we will capture that concept, but, uh, um, yes, pe people did mention that as an important part. So again, here's the current mission, um, current vision. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to just jump right to a draft and, uh, I want to take a moment and describe uh, what we tried to do with this. Um, again, we tried to synthesize all of this input. Um, first, we changed MMWD to Marin Water. That was, seemed important. Um, uh, then uh, capturing the, the, the breadth of what you manage, the lands, the water, and the facilities. So capturing infrastructure, um, uh, obviously water management, and the lands that, uh, that you're responsible for. Um, we added the concept of in our trust uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it, it has a nice feel of, of um, we are, uh, as in essence, sort of just borrowing these resources, uh, if you will. So, um, but it also, I think, uh, uh, helps define that what you're managing are the things that are in your control. Um, but in our trust sounds a little bit uh, uh, better than in our control. Uh, to provide uh, reliable, high-quality water and adapt and sustain these treasured resources for the future. So um, the, the delivery part of it, uh, of reliable, high-quality water, uh, and then uh, adapting and sustaining uh, the resources that... Uh, so 
uh, putting that that service delivery first, but uh, with an acknowledgement that adaptation and and sustainability uh, are really important. Um, I'll pause there um, before I do my next slide, which. Charles, you, you you said that you're not looking for wordsmithing right now. So how how do we provide feedback? Come. I know it's going to come, but okay. but let me let me let me frame the question this way. So um, I'm interested to hear what you like about this, uh, and what you would improve about it. So more more sort of uh, your your broader reactions. Um, are there words that particularly strike you as oh that's good I like that or um, no, that one doesn't quite resonate with me yet. Uh, or are we missing a concept here that uh, that seems important that we ought to capture? Why don't we all take a turn here? Are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. I, I like the uh, implications of stewardship, right? You're 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 articulating a responsibility that Moran Water has to safeguard and provide service, reliable, high quality water. I think those are the, right now, the, you know, the, 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 the first things that jump out in terms of pros. Um, I still need to think about cons, so I'll pass it okay. on. Okay, great. Matt? <clears throat> I'm in the, in the same boat as um, Ranjeev on this. The only word that I'm hung up on right now is treasured. Um, and I think that it's important to drive home the um, the fact that these are finite resources, uh, especially as we face this changing climate. So treasured seems a little bit too, I guess, positive for me. I'd like to be able to see if we can look at something that um, understands that, you know, the seriousness of, of what we're asked to, to actually do based on the mission. Larry? Sure. Well, there's a couple of things. Um, I think the issue of fire needs to be added to the list. And I think the concept of, to whatever extent we can, managing the animals or protecting them, uh, including the plants and animals. So we probably need something in there about nature. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Great. That's all I got. I know. Jed? Yeah, I love it. Um, thank you for doing this. Uh I, I think it's a significant upgrade already. Uh I think that um you highlighted in your comments the phrase in our trust. I actually think that's the one that stuck out as me is the one that needs the most work. Um, I never trust anyone who says trust me or um you know, believe me. Uh, so I, I understand what you're trying to achieve with that, which is that it's a responsibility. I think you could work with that. I also, frankly, have an issue with the word hour that makes it seem like it's ours and, and it's everybody's. So I, I think, I think the idea of being, you know, in the, you know, responsibility, you know, to, care for this is important um i see what you're saying matt with treasured uh i think treasured is close it, it, it we have scarce um resources that that have that are threatened i don't know that we need to say that they're threatened i think treasure is pretty darn close to what we want to say i mean they're they're really beloved um so i i think you're on the right track um i i i uh I think you've done a great job. I think a little tweaks, you're getting close. Thank you. Um, I'll uh, echo. I think the 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 term in our trust. Um, uh, I get it, but I, I think it also is a little laden. It's a little complicated to explain to the general public what it means to hold in in the trust. Um, I, I I think that a concept that is missing is our our communities that we serve. So maybe manage the lands, water, and facilities on behalf of our communities or to provide reliable water supply for our communities. But somehow or another, we're missing the the people we're serving. So I, I think that that's a, an element that I would mm -hmm. look to have in here. Um, 
I don't love the word treasured either, but maybe precious because it's sort of, but which I think kind of um, maybe conveys both its value, but also its tenuousness sometimes, uh, you know, wordsmithing. But um, I think this is getting onto a really great track. So thank you. Right. Monty, can I say one more thing? Yes, of course. What I, what I love about this, and often missions do not do this in vision statements, but what, what I love about it is that it's aspirational, that we're going to provide that we're seeking to achieve, that it, it's verb focused and um, not necessarily into the weeds of any specific thing that we're doing, any pipeline or coho salmon or any any specific thing. I, I really do like that that it has an aspirational quality. So uh, I, I really appreciate this is not easy. And I do, I would echo too. I think that the that uh, that. Uh, including in this are some of our our the wildlife and natural resources i think is a is an important nod to the other part of our of our natural community that we're serving may, may, can i add of course so um charles i don't i you know i think you'll be we'll be moving on to the vision and so I'm not sure what I'm, you know, what I'm thinking now, I'm not sure if it's more appropriate within the mission or the vision, but something I would push for and, and is an articulation of Marin Water as a, as a leading, you know, as a leader in maintaining sustainable water supplies in coastal arid regions for not, not using all those words, but I think we have an opportunity to establish ourselves, establish Marin Water as the example of how to cope in the with climate change in the absence of significant access to external water sources. And I think we can set ourselves up to show the rest of the world on how that's done. And I don't know if that's captured in the mission or the vision, but I would urge that we try to articulate that ambition as well. That's great. Excellent. Okay. I have right. one more question. Okay. Oh, go ahead. I, I agree with Ranjeev that stewardship, I think, is probably the term we need there. That's a term we've used in the past. And it kind of fits into what the board does or the district does. Okay. Anticipating that there was a word here that you would want a wordsmith. Um, that, uh, because in our discussions, we wrestled with this word as well. So, uh, we went to the thesaurus and gave you some other options of, uh, what else might work with treasured resources. So here's your opportunity to do some wordsmithing. If you want to come up with some other words, you've already suggested a couple, but, um, this is a little bit the process now of like, can we, can we find a word that resonates a little bit better or feels a little bit better? Um, we started with remarkable, uh, in the staff workshop and they're like, oh, that's not quite the right word. Treasure doesn't seem quite right. So we'll keep playing around, but if you've got, got something that resonates, let us know. Uh, so I, I might look to our communications expert to, to weigh in as well. She was a quiet observer in the staff workshop. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually don't think we said it, but the staff workshop was all non-management staff too that were selected from across the organization. Um, and it was really good discussion. Okay. Okay. So I, I don't have one vision. I have some options for you. And so here I, I think there are, the, the question is, uh, well, I'll, I'll, let me walk through a couple of them and, and give you a flavor. So, um, so one approach is to think of your vision is about what is, what is the vision for the organization? Um, and some organizations do this. So Marin Water is a leader in water and natural resource management and strives to address the challenges and opportunities in a changing environment. Um, this one resonated with staff, uh, particularly the changing environment part. Again, recognizing that we're, we're all in a different world than we were in fi even five years ago. Um, uh, capturing that idea of leadership, um, making sure that that's, uh, that's in the picture. Um, and then, you know, addressing the challenges and opportunities, the, the adaptation adaptation aspect of it. So this one resonated pretty well. Um, again, this is focusing on what what's your vision for the organization. 
uh, as is this one, uh, just using a different set of words a little bit. So this is just a variation. Um, Marin Waters forward looking and innovative in supporting the health, resilience, and well being of Marin communities and natural resources. So this captures the communities, um, the natural resources. Uh, uh, innovation was a, a word we heard uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, resilience is just a, a more, maybe a more current term for uh, adaptation. Um, then uh, we had a, a specific suggestion from staff. So we thought we'd include this one. Um, and this is starting to transition a little bit more towards uh, another way of thinking of a vision is what's your vision for the world we live in or the community we're, we're serving. So it's a, a little bit more of an outward framing of a, of a vision. So we protect our water, uh, sorry, we protect the water our community needs and the resources it comes from for the foreseeable future. So it has a forward um, thinking element to it, has a sustainability element to it, it has a community element. Um, uh, and then the natural resources is a little bit, uh, is there, but it's a little bit more oblique. Um, so then continuing on the direction of um, thinking more of, a, of an outcome kind of vision, um, that we envision a resilient water system that enhances the health and well-being of people and the environment of Marin County. And then the last one um, is uh, we envision a healthy, a vibrant community with access to clean water and world-class natural resources. So first two focused a little bit more on a vision for the organization. Uh, the middle one um, sort of combining the two. Uh, and then the last two focusing on a, an outcome vision for the community or the, the area you serve. Um, so I guess my first question is, where on that spectrum do you land? Do you Would you prefer to have something that, that describes a vision of the organization? Or would you prefer to have something that is uh, aspirational for the community you serve or the, the, the world we live in or the, the region we live in? Well, let's go first on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I probably started with the hard question, but. No, it's an interesting um, kind of pathway or, or the ability to go one way or the other, but um, you know, when I look at this, I think it's important for, for us to keep a vision for what we're doing here for Marin Water. Um, I don't know if I'd use the word Marin communities in there just because we have um, other communities that don't use our water as of right now. And so as a blanket statement, but what I think is important in keeping, maybe using the word or, or a similar one using the thesaurus you referenced earlier, a progressive um, agency or somewhere along those lines, because to Ranjeev's point, I think whether we're looking for a new water supply, whether we're looking for a way to restore the creek, whether we're looking for a way to prevent wildfire, whether we're looking for a way to produce our own energy so that we reduce our carbon footprint. I think all those are progressive um, options or, or or processes that I like to see us bundle up into one for this and move it forward like that. Yeah, I also lean to, I mean, very much to the, focusing the vision on on the institution on Marin water um in addition to what Matt noted regarding the uh um implications of you know or the articulation of being progressive I think this you know the using the word leader that 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 also speaks to the aspiration that Jed was speaking about or or the ambition of achieving sort of world class status not just survival, you know, yeah, but 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 going well beyond that. So I, I I do like you know the the inclusion of of leader. Probably my only quibble is you know when we say things like challenges and opportunities, that's you know I think I write that phrase probably ten times a day. It's just so, it's so overused. So maybe things like the complexity of a changing environment, you know, just but those are quibbles. Um, I, I have a little heartburn with number two. I do not understand number three. I don't understand the wording, what's trying to be said there. Mm -hmm. 
I especially the second phrase, it comes from for the foreseeable future. So I like I say, over my head. Jed? Yeah, I, I um yeah, I, I, this is this is why you, you get paid for doing what you're doing. I think you want to have all of it. So you want to address our staff. This has to be a vision that shows something that's aspirational to be a leading organization that they want to be a part of, that they want to achieve great things here. And you want to have this be aspirational for our customers and our community, that they have trust, that we are forward thinking, and we are going to do the absolute best possible work for them and their habitat and their community. So you have to address both. Um, and, and then you have to address our quote unquote natural resources and, and our habitat. So you have to address all of them in a vision. I personally only want to be a part of an organization that is a leading organization that is achieving, trying to achieve best in class, that wants to absolutely be forward thinking and thoughtful. And a vision statement is supposed to do that. So, so we we should strive to be the leading organization that in, that the best possible employees want to work for and that they will be attracted to, and that will help us do the best job that we can for our community and serve our natural resources the best. So I kind of, you want to do it all, you have to achieve it all. Uh, I'm super appreciative, as you said, Adrian, that you reached out to the staff and particularly non-management and leadership. Uh, the idea of pushing the strategic plan for me, anyone, anyway, came from meeting with some staff Early on, and I think it was January when someone highlighted the fact that we hadn't had a strategic plan in a long time. And so it was from that meeting that I that it highlighted the fact that this is really important. So I would say the inclusion and the process is as important as the result. And I'm really psyched that you guys are meeting with folks and getting their input. So in a way, number three is the most important to me because it came from them. But in the end, you have to you have to respond to all of our our all, all of our stakeholders, and and um, I won't repeat who they are again. Thank you. Thank you. I think I would just add, I guess, my own perspective that uh, I do think this is a vision that needs to be a, a state what as an entity, so Marin Water, I think needs to be in there, and then we are that that is the we. So, uh, but I, I recognize sort of the special way in which we say we is very inclusive um where marin water sounds a little bit more like the in, the institution versus the people and in really it is the people i think we are wanting to at work here that we want to honor um in a particular way um if we can but you know there, there's a limitation of what can be fit within you know 15 words um i, I agree that we want to be leaders or, or exhibit leadership. Um, I, I think that, that the mission is far too important and the challenges we're facing are far too daunting to be laggards. Um, we will be in deep trouble if we um, fall asleep or um, fail to, to be leaders because the challenge is that great and, and, um, and things are moving so fast. So I feel, feel like we have to be in that space. Um, and I really do think that we, um, again, the people we serve, our communities are really important to recognize and the, and the sor source of where our water comes from, because we want to be to protect our communities. We have to be protecting our natural resources. So if you can fit all that in, I'd be super <laughs> game with all that. No, but thank you. This is a really great exercise. Um, it's really important. Great. Any additional thoughts? Okay. So, um, so I think it's also one of the things we learned in the staff workshop was it's good to put the two next to each other because we went through this conversation and we kind of got to one and they said, well, isn't that kind of like the mission? And some people write missions that are kind of visionary and some people write visions that are kind of mission oriented, not missionary. Um, so I think it's useful to look to the two together, uh, a little bit. So, um, Again, the mission focused a little bit on more, this is what we do, but 
you know, it has adaptation, sustainability, you know, thinking for the future. Um, and then I just picked one of the visions and put it there. So looking at that combination is also important so that um, you don't have to say marine water everywhere. You could say marine water in the mission and say communities in the in the vision. So uh, in that in that sense, I think this this kind of does reflect a good combination. Um, may not, uh, but you, you've all said the leadership is really critical. So we've got to we got to pick a vision that has that word leadership in it. I think. Um, so. Um, any final thoughts on mission vision? Okay. Uh, ni Charles, nice move to put them up side by side like this. Yeah. No, I, I, it, it really was the staff that pointed out like that, that we hadn't put them side by side and they kind of ended up sort of looking similar. So once you put them side by side, you get a little bit more variation. So, um, Okay, let me talk a little bit about values. We got a lot of input on values. Um, uh, so let me just walk walk through that and then I'll go through some uh, some suggestions that we have. Um, so living the district's values is about speaking to what creates cohesion. Again, this idea of alignment and cohesion and the values being important for that. Um, values should have a clear voice using a common language representative of the staff, management and board. Um, the value should address Marin Water's core business and of water supply. They ought to be incorporated into the actions of the organization, and they ought to be part of a uniform review process and guide performance management um, from supervisors on up. Uh, so that was taking the idea of values and really um, thinking it through as to kind of how, how do you make them really um, operationalized in the organization. Uh, the value should speak about the type of organization you've joined and how everyone will work together and how you, how to approach being a member of the organization. So that was thinking of the values in, in, in the concept of you're trying to attract new people. As new people come in, how do you align them with the organization? And the values are important for that. Um, define what fairness, dignity, respect, and culture mean to Marin Water. How are these values acted on? Um, we get comments about a number of the values that the existing values that are just one word. And so um, the idea of, of uh, dignity or diversity were, was pointed out as like, we need more to define what those mean. Um, ask leadership the question, what does it take to promote, achieve, and live our values? Um, so again, thinking about, we, we don't want to just write the values. We want to think, think about how do we incorporate them into the organization. We heard some suggestions, uh, keep the values broad and short. Um, uh, we weren't suggesting just one word, but, uh, but keeping, them, uh, keeping them broad and using goals and objectives to flesh out more meaning uh, in the values. Uh, so again, this idea of adding stri add striving to be best in class for water supply, professionalism, innovation. Uh, we got those kinds of comments uh, a lot. Uh, add, a, add a value that reflects doing something that is vitally important to the community and the employee pri pride of that ownership. So the idea of service and dedication, um, that came through loud and clear from, from staff comments. Of, we, we, we really like what we do. for the, we, We're here because we do this for our community. Uh, so we ought to reflect that in the values. Uh, add a value for economic sustainability and vitality, supporting Marin's businesses and housing. And I think that's that's suggested as uh, maybe a little bit more of a balancing of um, it is not just about the natural resources, but the water provides uh, a really important benefits for the community um, uh, beyond just drinking water. Um, safety is a core value. We heard this a lot, uh, public health and safety. Um, so various aspects of that. Um, and then we value the connection of life to natural resources. Uh, so that uh, the watershed produces this water, which is important to life. So that kind of connection is an important value for the people. Uh, so some more suggestions uh, include a value statement about customer relationships, service, and responsiveness, uh, public service. Again, we heard this a lot from staff of the idea that, that uh, the organization is responsive uh, and is focused on public service. Uh, we value learning from others, self-assessment, mentorship, and knowledge sharing. Communications across the organization and from the top down are important. Um, 
Uh, so the the idea of of learning uh, uh, came uh, came came out really clearly in the staff workshop. That was something they really um, brought forward. Uh, diversity is important. What does it mean to Marin Water? We need something more descriptive of what diversity means. Um, we promote responsible public business practices, fiscal responsibility, and competitive purchasing. Um, so this, even though the at a reasonable price didn't resonate with people, the idea that you're fiscally responsible and you have good public business practices, that resonated with people and, and was seen as important value. Uh, collaboration and cooperation with others with other agencies is important. I would say agencies and partners is important. Um, add a value about anticipation, looking ahead, and preparedness. Um, that was a, a um, recognition that that uh, the times demand more anticipation and preparedness. Uh, we value the human resources of marine wa marine water. So here are the existing values. Um, uh, again, a lot of these are are pretty simple, one one word, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, so we did a little bit more, and let me um, walk through. So initial draft values: uh, Marin Water is dedicated to serving customers in the community by upholding these core values. Health and safety: We are committed to the health and safety of our colleagues and community. Stewardship, we recognize the essential connection between people and natural resources and manage our lands and facilities for sustained benefits now and in the future. Excellence and innovation, we strive for excellence and innovation with the highest levels of personal and organizational accountability. Efficiency and responsiveness, we value efficiency, cost effectiveness and timely service in our work with customers and communities. Inclusion and respect. We seek to establish a welcoming environment that embraces differences and offers respect, dignity, and fairness for all people and partners. Listening and learning. We enhance ourselves and the organization by listening to others, reflecting on our performance, and sharing knowledge with others. Teamwork and partnerships. We collaborate with internal and external partners to anticipate the challenges ahead and achieve our mission. Um, I would highlight a couple of things off of this. Uh, the listening and learning one was it came from the staff workshop, and they really resonated with that. And I know um, Director Smith, you raised this earlier, so this is this is where that that appeared is. Um, they felt strongly that this organization does that quite well, and wanted to reinforce it in the values statement. So um, that's one that we added based on the staff uh, workshop. Um, uh, I think you'll see here the, a lot of the concepts that that you were suggesting for mission and uh, vision uh, are captured here. So the nested set, when we put them all together, I, I think is going to touch on a lot of a lot. I mean, we we heard very similar things from everybody, all good, all positive, constructive, and so we've tried to put them in places the way they seem to to fit best. Um, so. Ultimately, the mission, vision, values all kind of nest together and describe the kind of organization that you all want to have. So um, thoughts, again, what do you like? What would you improve? Uh, tried to put a little bit more language around uh, some key, key words to um, make them a little bit uh, easier to understand what we mean by um, the things that matter. Um, maybe I'll jump in here first, um, and say, um, I think that this covers the, the, a, a lot, but it's almost, um, I, I, I don't know if this may sound unkind, but it, it sounds generic. I mean, in, in some ways I feel like I've seen these same things in, in other places and I'm not sure it really speaks to us. I guess is, I mean, these are all great principles. And so, and, and all of them, but I'm, I feel like they're like, they're not necessarily speaking to us necessarily as directly. I don't know how to solve that necessarily, but um, so I'm, I think of like, how, how does this apply to Marin water uniquely? 
and maybe that it doesn't. I think I also would um I, um I I get the point of having like health and safety stewardship excellence and innovation. I would rather see an adjective in the so that in in like um we are stewards instead of stewardship. Something that that makes almost in some ways that first highlighted part be a statement unto itself. And then if you don't know what that means, that then there's maybe the finer, the, then there's the sentence thereafter. But you, the, the what you see up front quickly says what we are. I also feel like something is missing about our values about how we are as Marin water that we're from top to bottom, all of us, from all the people who work and serve within the district are a team. We are, you know, we are part of Marin Water. And there's something that's unifying about all of us that I I, I aspire to see that strengthened in our culture and in how we view each other and and it, and it, and it and it is part of what creates these other things that are inclusion and respect and listening and learning and teamwork and part of that comes from a sense of we are not a district of separate divisions and and unions and management and represented but we're all here um, working together i'll stop there well, that's good. I think the only thing to add is um, I, I, excellence innovation to me don't seem to go exactly hand in hand with personal and organizational accountability. Those feel like very different things. And innovation, it's almost becoming a little too generic, as maybe Monty was getting it. I, I wonder if there's another way to frame um the 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 again this aspiration of maybe showing the rest of the world how it's done you know um excellence and innovation just it seems a little bit doesn't feel strong enough but yeah that's it You know, looking at, at the way they la they're laid out, they're pretty comprehensive, and I'm I'm good with this format, but also good with the way you proposed, President Schmidt, of um, actually using them as phrases, as adjectives. I think either way would work well. Um, I I do like the ability to tie everything together, and and almost like the vision of the everyone's paddling the same ship in the same direction, and how do we capture that in these values, so that everyone understands that they're you know they're part of a machine that's actually moving this forward in a way that we that we're hoping to based on the mission. But um, other than that, I think I'm good with the way these values are actually contained. I agree with Matt. Uh, I like them. Um, I, I think that one thing that's critical to understand is that we're a medium, small fish in the world of water. And um, while... I think it's great to strive to be a leader. Um, I can assure you that we we'll never will be a leader in the water industry in that sense. It's just not in the cards. The external cost of doing that, I mean, to really do that kind of thing, you need to have a plan to make Ben the president of the American Water Works Association, which is like a 10 year effort, you know, that's how you move out of the sphere. I coached and criticized East Bay Mud because I didn't think they were enough of a leader and they're 10 times bigger than us. So it's good to strive for, but just understand that, you know, we're kind of a bee in a bottle and that's, we're not going to get away from that. We can hope to, but I just uh, want to caution you that it, it's a very pricey uh, business to get into to really try to lead the water industry.
Jed? Yeah, I, I think uh, oh, high level, um, the most important thing about values like these is how, is the process and how you implement them and how you reinforce this kind of culture inside the organization. It's not just putting words down, but it's following through and executing on them and making sure that everyone actually does what we say we're going to do. So, you know, th this is not an end in the process by coming up with a sheet on our PowerPoint. This is this is really a beginning on how we make sure that we respect our staff, that we have a listening and learning organization. And then per your point, Ranjeev, that we think about innovation uh, in, a, in a different way. The, be the best um, person, the founder of Zappos, who unfortunately passed away, he said he wanted his folks to think weird. And, and the Google folks said they want to be creative, like every individual has something to add. And so, Larry, as far as I'm concerned, to be a leading organization does not mean to be big and does not mean to have the most money. It means to be the most thoughtful and creative and, and aspiring organization that can handle our unique issues. And our unique issues are, are large and they're fascinating and they can impact uh, a lot of people. And, that, and, and frankly, we can just be leading ourselves to be the best that we possibly can be. And anything I do in my life, I wanna be the best I can be. And so to be my own leader, I'm trying to do the best that I can and to hire my own staff. I want them to be the best they can. And frankly, people feel better about themselves if they do that. And so leadership is not necessarily trying to become California water, which is not what I want Marin water to be. Leadership is about being the best that we possibly can be. And the best that we possibly can be is about listening, is about being innovative, it's about being creative, and then executing in a very thoughtful manner. So I, I think this is all really, I mean, the words are great. I can wordsmith them as much as we want with anyone, but in the end, it's about execution and, and making sure that we fulfill these values to achieve the, the, the vision and mission that you set forth before this. Ben, you want to weigh in? I, I do. I, I On this one particularly, I do have some a couple thoughts I wanted to share. Um, I, I do like the idea that President Schmidt noted of strengthening the bolds, for example. I'd like to see we prioritize health and safety. I mean, there's nothing more important for staff than that. Um, we embrace stewardship. Anyway, I, I like that notion a bit. Um, but my main comment is I like the inclusion and respect and the listening and learning, but there is a piece that's not captured, which is the actionable in terms of engagement and inclusion and decision making. At the end of the day, that's kind of the, to me, the core of um the aspirational aspect of our culture. And as we think of, you know, where's the brass ring? You know, it's people feeling heard, but with actual um, processes and practices that they can see their input and their experience and expertise is part of and valued part of decision-making in different ways. So that's my uh, two cents. I well, I agree with that, right? You got to make the call and move forward. So the, the execution part, that, that was well said. Thank you, Ben. I think that I, I, that echoes, at least for me, when you said that, when I think of like, when we think of ourselves as, as a district that is all people and that each person has something important to contribute and how we can do that. Um, okay. I mean, we could go on because this is important stuff, but uh, where do we... No, that, no, that's uh, this is great. Um, very good input. I'll have to do a little more synthesizing to figure out how do we adjust and, and adapt these. Um, and again, I think these are going to uh, refine and move forward as part of the larger strategic plan. So as I said, this is a nested set, then goals and objectives start to nest in there. And I know you've all been very interested in how do you operationalize these values? So there are going to be goals and objectives 
related to that. Um, so that's coming too. So, you know, we're, we're just at the beginning of the, and the top. So we'll, we'll massage the language and it'll fit into further detail of how does, how does this guy actually going to work? But these are great comments, exactly what we're hoping to get from all of you is get some direction and, and we'll keep refining. Uh, which I think gets us to our next steps. Um, and uh, what we've been thinking, and and we're still working with Ben and Adrian on this, but uh, uh, October, we want to have a discussion with you about goals. And that'll be a broad discussion, sort of, you know, different approaches to goals. Um, but uh, uh, try to come out with that with some general direction from all of you on the goals, and then come back in future uh, sort of one a month, come back with specific goals and objectives, started to flesh those out uh, and uh, uh, review those with you. Um, and there's staff invo involvement in developing those goals and objectives. We're still working out the details of how that's gonna work, but it's gonna build on what we've been doing so far, which I think, I think has been really constructive for everybody. We've learned a lot, I think, Ben and the senior management team has learned a lot. And I think staff has gotten a lot of value out of it and felt felt quite good about it. So we're going to continue that process and bring you the, the pieces for um, refinement and guidance. That's everything I had. Fantastic. Public comments. Do you have any public comments? Yes, we have a couple. The first two are Phil Sauter, then Ed Jamison. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I may be a little bit confused as to the purpose of the mission statement. I'd originally thought it was an outward facing mission statement that involved the public and some of the director's comments uh, were consistent with that. But in listening to tonight's meeting, I'm wondering if it's more of an internal mission statement for how the organization itself operates. So my comments have to do as if it's an outward facing mission statement. And for me in this age of uncertainty, uh, reliability bubbles to the top of the district's mission and vision. One thing we can all agree on about climate change is that future years will be less predictable than past years. During the past four years, we've had two wet winters and two dry winters. Looking at the next four years, I don't think anyone can say we'll have two wet and two dry. We might have four wet or four dry. Um, one thing that the district can do in its mission statement um, is, is to, is um, strive for not a two-year supply, but a four-year supply of drinking water. A few months ago on the website, I'm, I was almost certain that drinking water was part of the mission statement, but it's not there today, so maybe I'm misremembering. On one of the early slides, it says the district uh, does not is not managing all the nat natural resources for Marin County, which is true. Uh, yet in a later vision statement, it says that MMWD is a service provider supporting the high quality of life in Marin County. I think quality of life in Marin County is kind of a broad statement, and I think it's fertile ground for conflicts. My neighbor may define high quality of life as a lush green lawn, whereas my idea of a high quality of life is a four-year supply of good drinking water. Um, if I, in these times of uncertainty, if I had to choose between a large complex mission statement with a lot of uncertainty versus a smaller, simpler mission statement with a higher degree of reliability, I choose the latter. I choose the smaller, more predictable and reliable alternative. And finally, if this mission statement is one that directly affects the district customers, um, I look for the next uh, for the process and the next steps to include a forum for customer input, and maybe that's still to come. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ed Jamison, please. Yes, thanks. Uh, I agree that the district's mission should be focused on providing reliable and high quality water. And I agree with President Schmidt that the mission statement's word treasured could be helpfully changed to precious. I'd also encourage conciseness. So any additions likely need to be offset by deletions. Thanks. Thank you. There are no further speakers. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That moves us on to our next item, which is future meeting schedule and agenda items. Yes. Good evening. So um, this Thursday, we'll have the watershed committee meeting at, on, at 1.30 p.m. 
Next uh, Thursday, September 28th, is the Finance and Administration Committee meeting. There is uh, no uh, October 3rd Board of Directors meeting uh, because it was scheduled for October 10th. Um, two external meetings coming up, as um, Director Sampson mentioned, the Tomales Bay Foundation's 8th Annual State of the Tomales Bay Conference is Friday, September 29th, and the North Bay Watershed Association uh, will have their monthly meeting Friday, October 6th. It's a field trip to Montezuma Wetlands Project, and I believe start, it begins at 10 a.m., and that is all I have. Okay, thank you, Terry. Okay, with that, we are going to move to closed session. And I think first we ask if there are any public comments on closed session items only. Um, there are none. No. no. <laughs> okay, with that, we're going to convene to closed session. Okay, so the closed session of the Marin Water Board of Directors on September 19th, 2023 was adjourned at 9.02 p.m., with no item, no action items to report. Thank you. And we are adjourned.